chapter 18 of our book purports to be about financial analysis, the big picture. But before it gets to the uh, nuts and bolts of financial analysis, it talks about three things, discontinued operations, comprehensive income, and changes in accounting principle. Discontinued operations mean we sold something, and if it meets certain requirements, we break it out separately on the income statement so people will know not to include it when they predict next year's results. Comprehensive income means anything that moves shareholders equity up or down other than distribution to or investment by owners. And changes in accounting principle uh, are applied retroactively. So let's talk about those real quick. So here's a statement of comprehensive income, which means they're going to have their income statement. And then down near the bottom here, they're also going to have other comprehensive income. But first, let's look at discontinued operations. So if they sell something and it represents a strategic shift for the corporation and that thing that they sold off has cash flows and operations that are clearly distinguishable, we treat it as a discontinued operation. Let's say I'm in the silverware business. I make traditional silverware and plastic silverware. Then I decide within my plastics operation, I decide to stop making sporks. Well, that really isn't a strategic shift. I probably can't separate the operations and the cash flows from the sporks, from the sp forks and the knives and the spoons. But what if I decide to get out of the plastics silverware business altogether and just sell traditional silverware? That would be a strategic shift and that business would have separate cash flows and operations. And so we have our loss from the operating activity. So we're running that thing during the year before we sold it. So that should be part of net income. We'll state it after tax because we do what's called an intra-period tax allocation. We allocate some tax expense up here, and some tax expense down here. This, of course, is a tax benefit because we're running this thing at a loss. We actually get a tax deduction. We sold the division. So there's two things that happen with the discontinued operation. While we're running it, it was either making money or losing money. These guys were losing money. And then we sell it either at a gain or a loss. We sell it at a gain. So we have to subtract income taxes of 15,000 from the $50,000 gain. And then net, you've got a $42,000 loss, a $35,000 gain. So at net, you've got a $7,000 loss, which is how you went from 46,200 minus 7,000 down to 39,200. And people who are trying to predict what our income is gonna look next year, they're not gonna look at this number down here because this includes that $7,000 loss. That stuff is gone. We're not in the plastics division anymore. They'll start up here to predict next year's net income. So we've talked about net income before. Now we're gonna talk about comprehensive income and we can have this in a separate schedule or we can tack it onto the bottom. I always tack it onto the bottom. Other comprehensive income is stuff besides net income that's important enough to talk about even though it hasn't happened yet. So I say other comprehensive income is important stuff that hasn't happened yet. It moves our shareholders equity up and down, but it doesn't show up in retained earnings because it hasn't happened yet. For example, these are unrealized gains on uh, available for sale securities. So we held some bonds, they went up in value, we didn't sell them, but the fact that they went up in value was important. So we marked them up on our balance sheet and we booked uh, $15,000 of unrealized gains. We uh, took off the income taxes of 30%. So after tax, we had an unrealized gain of 10,500. Real quick, other things that qualify for other comprehensive income, important stuff that hasn't happened yet are if our pension fund does really well or really poorly, we'll amortize some of that really good news or really bad news out of accumulated other comprehensive income. Uh, what also might qualify is if we have a hedge on an investment or a foreign transaction and we treat it as a cash flow hedge, that's for advanced accounting. And finally, if we have a foreign sub and we translate their uh, financials into US dollars, there may be a translation adjustment. So those are other three examples of other comprehensive income. So the last kind of oddball topic that the book talks about in the beginning of chapter 18 is changes in accounting principles. Changes in estimates are no big deal. If we thought our equipment was gonna last us for 20 years and we were depreciated over 20 years and it turns out it's gonna last us 25, 
we'll just change our depreciation schedule going forward prospectively to write it off over 25 years. If we, however, make a change in accounting principle, we change the way that we're doing our financials, we have to go back to the beginning of time and restate all our financials from the day that we opened our doors. So we try to avoid doing this and wherever possible, we interpret things as being a change in estimate rather than a change in principle. So these guys are sitting here, they've been using FIFO. And so if they're using FIFO, that means that they're pretending like they sold their oldest stuff, which they bought at the cheapest prices, which means they have lots of income and before taxes, which means they've got high taxes and high net income. But what if they decide to change? They say, you know what? Average cost better reflects our flow of goods. We really should change from first in, first out to average cost. So they start using average cost in 2017. So that's what their income statement looks like. But they go back and they restate all the previous years. So if you looked at their annual report for 2016, that's you got the paper report in your hand. It says they made $21,000 in net income. You open up the 2017 annual report and the annual report says, no, last year we made 18,900. And you're trying to figure out how that changed. Well, it changed because they had a change in accounting principle. They switched from FIFO to average cost, which means they had to go back to the very beginning of time and restate all their income statements for all the years, which is why we tried to avoid that. All right, hope that helps.